Okay, John, uh, tell us how it came about that you signed for Nottingham Forest. Well, I've been at Leeds United when Brian Clough uh, took me there as the manager. Obviously, he lasted 44 days and got the sack. Um, I was left there not really wanted by the club. Um, not the most popular person because Brian Clough had signed me to join them. Um, so it was a case of waiting to see what would happen. Uh, I had offers to go to Norwich, an offer to go to Carlisle, uh, but I did get a discreet phone call saying uh, don't go anywhere just at the moment um, and eventually joined Nottingham Forest along with John O'Hare. So we know that you came into professional football fairly late as a sort of 15 year old. Um, were you aware about Nottingham Forest and certainly about Nottingham as a youngster and if you were what were your sort of uh, impressions of those? Well geographically I knew where it was and I knew Richard Green played Robin Hood in the television series uh, but apart from that I'm afraid not a lot about the city at the time. And also in um, in those days when you played, and we know you set a lot of store around footballers having the ability to control the football and then play from there. Pitches in those days going back were somewhat <laughs> not quite as carpet-like as they are these days. So just tell us your thoughts on that and playing on those types of pitches and how you see that now with these absolutely perfect carpet pitches that we've played. Well, it's one, there's one thing I'm jealous of, Graham, you know, when you look at the players playing on bowling greens and, you know, the, the pitch I played on at Derby County, the old baseball ground, you know, was absolutely horrific during the winter months um, and six inches of mud. We were able to play on it at Derby County because we got used to it. The opposition wasn't, so perhaps that was one of the things that went in our favour. And Even at Nottingham Forest, uh, the state of the pitch, you know, once it got to November, December time, very little grass down the middle of the pitch. If it rained heavily, then you know it's going to be mud. But you know, if you're a professional, you adapt to different surfaces as well as you know different situations. So you know, we just got on with it in those days. I mean, we used to play even if it was snowing. You know, so if the pitch was frozen, as long as it was flat, we used to play. But the the pitches were one thing that I do really feel envious of the modern players of playing on them because that was the type of surface that certainly would have. Uh, Help my attributes, which was passing the ball. Over the years, you've been not seems been put on the map. Certainly, apart from Robin Hood, as you mentioned already, but in terms of winning the European Cup, it really did put Nottingham as a city on the map. And even when I go on my holidays now, people still talk about Robin Hood and Nottingham Forest, and probably more about Nottingham Forest and, and Robin Hood. Um, and recently, of course, with the the 150 years celebrations of Nottingham Forest being founded on the Forest Recreation Ground, and also the I Believe in Miracles film, that's all come back again. Just tell me, as a, as a group, I mean, you're a key member of that team, how have you felt about all that celebration? Well, it was, it was great to be, you know, part of the glory years in the club's history. Um, I think all the players were grateful for that. Um, obviously, the 30 years down the line, somebody's made a movie about the achievements of the team, which before Sky Television um, and Premier Leagues were ever invented, there wasn't as much publicity about it. So, you know, we are pleased to have contributed to the history of the city. Uh, certainly we're pleased that somebody made a movie about us, you know, for us all thoughts to get on the big screen. That's a little <laughs> bit of a miracle in itself. Uh, but we did, and um, I mean, I have been told we've sold over 100,000 copies of the DVD, which, you know, in itself is a little bit of a miracle. But it all just adds to the enjoyment, especially from my point of view, because you know I work at Nottingham Forest now as the club ambassador. So you know I'm still working down at the club, still enjoy the people that work there, still enjoy watching the matches, um, with more nerves, funny enough, now than I did as a player. <laughs> it's, it's torture being a spectator at a match, especially at Forest. Um, when you were playing, it was easy. If things weren't going well, you could do something about it. Uh, John, so we, we spoke briefly about the reception you received bringing the European Cup back to Nottingham when you arrived through those sliding doors at East Midlands Airport, and then following that, lots of celebration and the sort of things that the city was really proud of. Just give us your sort of impressions of those times, and particularly things like that open top bus through the city, the civic reception on the balcony of the council house. How did you sort of receive all that? Well, the reception that we had from the people was fantastic and the numbers that they turned out in was just unbelievable. I mean, obviously we'd won the league the year before, but you know, to win the European Cup, you, you win it out of the country, uh, you're proud to represent the country, you bring it back into the country. And then when we got back to East Midlands Airport, we just couldn't believe the numbers of people that had turned up. Um, I mean, just phenomenal numbers of people. The, the feeling amongst the players was just tremendous. Um, 
reception at the the town, the city square. I mean that for the number of people that were there. I mean, I mean we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. You know, I mean you, we played in front of a hundred thousand at Wembley Cup finals, but the warm reception that we got and all Forest fans when we came here um, just made us all feel very very proud to be part of the city in Nottingham at that time.